Hey everybody, coming at you with another semi-exciting video. <laughs> I'm out here today by myself because Nick was busy, so I'll be running the camera myself. Now, the name of the channel is Fun in the Woods, okay? So, that's what I do. Uh, I teach a little bit about camping, hiking, bushcraft, survival, uh, cutting tools, shelters, but the name of the game is Fun in the Woods. So I don't always do things in the most efficient manner. <laughs> Some of the things I show, people are like, oh, why don't you bring a tent? Oh, why don't you bring a hammock? <laughs> well, the whole idea is getting out and goofing off and doing weird things in nature. So with that said, today we are going to make a stool with paracord and we're gonna make a table with paracord and we're gonna make a bed out of paracord. So that's kind of cool. I know there's more efficient ways of doing things, but this is a fun way of just taking a pile of paracord and turning trees into your furniture and your campsite, all right? So, and I got a few other little odds and ends that I'm gonna to show too. A couple of things people's been asking about. So, uh, first thing you gotta do, site selection. You gotta kinda look at the trees and once you've built enough of this stuff, you're gonna understand what trees work best. You can't always find ideal trees, but it's good to find what you think will work best. So I think I found an area, uh, I had to walk like a half an hour to try to find the perfect area and I never could, so I just gave up <laughs> and this will work. So, all right, let's get started on this. The first thing that we're gonna do, uh, I've been known for about 10 years on YouTube now for hanging my backpack to a tree instead of sitting it on the ground. And some people had asked one time, they said, how do you take care of that if it rains? Or how do you, how do you take care of that if the trees are wet or whatever? Well, I'm fixing to show you that. Nope, better take off my kidney belt. <laughs> all right, so now this kind of works with all packs, but the packs that have the frames in them tends to work best on that. All right, I have my Hidden Woodsman that has no frame. It's just got shoulder straps and a kidney belt. So we're gonna pull out a tarp, all right? Throw that on the ground. And then we're gonna pull out, I think it's in this side. Nope, it's in the other side. We're gonna pull out a bungee cord. Now I got a video of about 10 years old of these bungee cords. And what I do is these bungee cords, to keep from wearing them out on tree bark, I cover them in these cloth sleeves. And I like a carabiner kind because they they lock on, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick out a bungee cord. I have several, I have several different lengths of them. This is more a part of the fun in the woods. <laughs> so you wanna take a tarp and so you wanna unfold it. Let's see, let's fold it this way. All right, then you want to fold it in half. It doesn't have to be gigantic. It be some, some kind of a reasonable size. Let's see. Yeah, I think that'll work. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's fold that in half. No, nope. let's fold it the other way. You can fold it long ways. Fold it like that. And then fold it over, okay? I folded it long ways, then I folded it over. And then you take a bungee cord, and then you run a bungee through it just like this. And then you stick it against the tree, all right? And then you pull it around. This is, this is a hard part. You have to reach up under half the tarp. flip it just like that. So what you've done is you got a tarp attached to a tree like this. So let's grab the pack now. I think I've got all this in shot. So let's grab the pack. And you want to grab your handle and you shove it against the tree. It's just like that. 
Now, so you're sitting against the tarp, and then you have this that will fold over the pipe. All right, just like that. Now, let's see if I got all that in. I had to back away a little bit. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing real quick when we have a, a close-up of it. Alright, you're covered, and then you lift it up, and then see, you got the tarp against the tree, that way you ain't got to worry about the back of that thing getting dirty. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing that's real important. All covered up All here, right. and for the general part, if most of the rain hits, it's just going to run right off. Now, let's lift this up. Now, for now, I'm probably going to take that other bungee cord. Yeah, let's take this other bungee cord. And let's hold this up so that it'll be out of the way. You see, that way all I got to do is, so I just clip that out of the way now up here. That thing's clipped out of the way so that if I have to, I'll just pull that bungee cord off and this will flop back over. Now, if you'll see on these bungee cords here, I clip them to each other. You don't want to clip one on each end of your strap because if you do, it tends to pull your strap apart. But see, instead, there's, there's no pressure on the strap on your backpack. All right, isn't that cool? Then you can take this. You can pull that bungee cord down like that. You see, it'll kind of hold up the lid right there a little bit. Now, I got some other odds and ends here that I'm going to show you. What I'm going to start with, let's pull this out. Because I'm going to start with a pile. I got a bag. Well, that didn't stay. <laughs> it needs to be down a little bit. There you go. I got a bag full of paracord we're going to look at. All right. Let's get you down on the ground. Let's look, look at, at this. You may not necessarily need all this bungee cord, but I brought it all for just in case. And now, what I do is... These bags that the newspapers come in, I think they're handy for keeping the different lengths in. And so it's like I've got some hanked up right there. There's some 50 feet, here's some 25 feet, and here's some 12 feet. And I always keep this stuff hanked up like this. And every time I do a video on paracord, I always get asked a hundred questions about how do you how do you make these neat little hanks that that, that where you can control how you carry your uh, paracord well I brought my jig with me and after we get the table built I'm gonna set it on the table and I'm gonna show you my jig and I'm gonna show you how I hank up this stuff here all right so first things for the for for, for the uh, for the stool uh, the first thing we got to do is we got to find uh, three sticks and uh, cut them down and then I'm gonna show you how to weave the stool now important you got to weave the stool before you weave the table because you don't know what the height of the table is going to be in relation to the stool. You can always just weave a table high enough that you can stand there and use, but since we're going to have a stool, we're going to make a table that's at a comfortable height for our stool. All right, sound good? <laughs> All right, let's get started on the first part of it. So after you found some sticks, you want to kind of round the tops just a little bit so that they won't poke you too bad. All right. Now, the thing about this stool is I'm going to tell you something is depending on the ground, okay, you want three sticks and they're probably going to be about eh, waist high. They come up to about my waist. Now, the bottoms, you want to leave the bottoms kind of blunt if the ground is real soggy, but if the ground is a little hard, you can trim these things off to a sharp point that way they'll dig in the ground uh, I usually like them in a sharp point so that they'll seat but this ground is real soggy it's rained a lot lately so if you were to grind these things to a point it would sink in the ground real bad and generally with me I like to be able to kind of move the stool around if I have to even though I've got a table I like to move it around so uh, let's go over here to where I think our table is going to be and let's start weaving the, the stove. Three sticks ready to go. What you want to do now, all right, you can see in shot. Let's take a piece of paracord that is about, let's take a large piece. 
No, let's take a medium piece. Let's just lay all this paracord out. I think you can kind of see it right there. And let's start with this piece. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and see how this unfolds like that. That's what I'm talking about, about hanking it. Now, when you get to the end, now normally I'll feed it out. Look at this. Now, see, that's, that's what happens when you feed it out right there. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to find the, the middle of it. I wanted to find the end. The end right there gets kind of tangled up right there. All right, so let's find the ends. All right, you take the ends. This is how I do it. Now this method is called frapping, and that is the act of tying a bunch of sticks together. Kind of like, you know, kind of like when you do a tripod or a wiki up. So what I do is I start out, and you want to go just Maybe a, maybe a little bit over center, a little bit higher. The, what I do is I start out with a prusik knot, pull it through, pull all that through. Now that right there, if you got one loop, that's a lark's head. But if you pull this around again and feed everything through, it magically becomes a prusik knot. I may have to edit some of this out. All right, now what you want to do next is I will pull it like that, and then I'll just start wrapping it around like that. And then you're going to get to a certain point. Let's put a whole bunch of cordage on here. More cordage, the better. And then when you get to where you got a couple of feet, what I'm going to start doing then. As I start to spread these things out in an even manner, the ground's a little uneven. All right, let's kind of spread these out a little bit, and then I'm gonna start running it over, over, and under, and over and under and so you just keep repeating this process until you're all these loops what you're doing is you're trying to keep them together to keep them from separating all right and then when you get done you just finish it off with a simple overhand knot now that this part's done what you want to do is you want to kind of wedge it in the ground where it's in a nice solid place and you take another hank of paracord and you go ahead and feed it out and then you do the same thing there's usually a knot there at the end when you feed it out all right so you want to take the ends of the paracord now this is the tricky part this is what will make or break your uh, stool grab the ends I'm trying to remember, I believe, you put a prusik knot. You start with a prusik knot, I know that, and then you end up with clove hitches. But I'm trying to remember which end. Yeah, you kind of want it on the outside. You want it to end up on the outside. All right, on one... Put on a prusik knot there. Let's see if I can get this thing to loosen up. Nah, I'm not going to be able to. You can't. Once you get it on there, see, you can't. You can't hardly get it to move. So I'm just going to have to pull it around like this. All right. And then you take one of them. Take one in. Now you're going to go with a clove hitch. So let's go over here. All right. Now I've got this, and I'm keeping it tight, as tight as I possibly can here. And I'm going to do a clove hitch here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank you down a little bit lower to where you can see it a little bit better. I think everybody knows what a prusik knot is. But for now I'm just going to wrap it around. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the clove Alright, now this crosses over like that. And 
then I think this goes back under like that. All right, that is a clove hitch. See that? Because the, the rope is crossing over and they're coming out in opposite directions. Now I took that first leg and I did clove hitch, clove hitch, clove hitch, clove hitch. So you've got these pieces here. Now the other leg that came off the prusik, now these can be all loose. Because when you move your stool, everything's going to spread out tight anyway. And it's, it's a lot easier to weave with everything loose. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this other leg and you come back over here. And you're going to do clove hitch, clove hitch, clove hitch. So that you've got multiple strands uh, forming your seat, holding these three together. So that's what I'm going to do now. Then I'll cut you back on and I'll show you how we use the lark's heads for the middle. But now is when you get done, you should have three to four strands of paracord going round and round. All right. Now for the next one, you're going to use a smaller strand. This is what I used the first time. Uh, this may be 25 feet. I think this is 12 feet because you really don't need as much for the top because you're just going to be going from place to place. So what I like to do, <clears throat> once again, Pull it out, and I always like to lock it in with a lark's head. Not a prusik knot, but a lark's head. All right, now I'm gonna show you something. You can take, you can do a lark's head, and I don't grab all of these because I weave back and forth to the different ones. Like instead of grabbing four, I'm gonna grab two right in the center, and the lark's head is so easy because you just take a loop, and then you feed all of your cord through. All right, you're right in the middle. Okay, now what I do. The next one is a little bit trickier because it's a single lark's head, and I'm trying to remember how I do it, but you grab like, say, grab three of these, and you're gonna go over and up, and then drop it back through like that. All right, now once you're over, okay, you go around and over, you have to feed back through this loop, which will be right here. Just like that. Now, if everything, and see, you should have two little knots just like that. All right. Now, well, I'm going to leave this length here, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to grab these two loose ones on the outside, and you go over. Well, you don't want to stand on it. O over, and then back through. And then in. All right. Now, uh, to me, a lark's head is a half a prusik knot. Okay. And so you're just going to take these two, and then since I've gone from the center to the center, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to here, and then here, and then this will go from here to here, so that I've got this whole thing covered. All right. I'm not going to bore you with this because we've got go. so much other underneath and back over, just like that. And then you're gonna go over the original. This is why you don't want a real long cord on this top part. Okay, so it's like you're looping around that original runners and then you've got a loop here that you're running through. So you say you got a loop here and then when you pull it tight, it won't slide. All right, so there's the finished top of the stool right there. <clears throat> now, is there easier ways of doing this? Yes, there absolutely is. But this is all about fun, and it also could be considered like kind of like training because, say, a lot of people put in their survival pack 50 feet or 100 feet of paracord. Well, if you've got paracord, you can make anything out of it. All right, now this looks kind of messy, but this is super strong. This won't slip and it won't break. Prusik knot, clove hitch, clove hitch, clove hitch, clove hitch, lark's heads. Okay. All right. Sometimes when you're out of position doing things, it's kind of confusing. So let's sit on this thing now. Sit you on the back a little bit. Let's, let's sit on it so that you can see that I'm not insane. <laughs> 
Let me adjust the camera a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So the way you want to do this is you just want to straddle one of them, all right, and you want to sit in it just like this. Now, I'm going to try. I'm going to put my hands here. Normally, you'll be sitting here like this. Let's see if it'll support all of my weight. There you go, just like that. Right, let me make sure that I, I moved got it a little bit because it was kind of leaning, but basically, let's try it again. Now, in general, like I said, you're going to be sitting here relaxing like this, and we're going to build our table. So I'm going to put a hand here. Normally, you wouldn't do this, but as you can see, it's holding my entire body weight. Right. So now what you want to do is you want to find four trees that are within reasonable distance that you're going to weave in between. And you just you're going to move your stool over to where where you're going to want it, and that way you'll that'll dictate the height of where it'll be. Looks like a decent spot. So let's put our stool right here. Gotta kind of make sure the ground's solid. Now you need three trees, possibly four. Four would be wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here. Now I'm going to put my hands right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to pull out some cordage. Just throw it on the ground. I want it about right here. It's going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie off here. Just like that. I think eh, maybe a little lower. Now I'm using a bowline or a bowline. That way I can adjust it up and down. Eh, a little, a little more. See, this is why you got to sit here. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do. is I'm just going to weave I'm going to weave between these three trees a triangle just a, a maze of, of paracord trying to get it as level as possible Now, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but what you want to do is you want to weave a perimeter just like you did with the stool. Now, you're just going to go back and forth with lark he lark's heads just like I did on the stool. All right, so I'm going to do that now off camera. So as you can see, I'm starting to weave a maze of paracord. So let's go over here and let's take a final look right here at this again, okay? All right, for the lark's head, you want to go over the main cord. And come up and go over this part. Go back around the main cord and come through. Give it a pull. And see, there's your lark's head. Now you can go crazy with this. You can have cordage run everywhere if you want to. But I'm going to show a little bit of restraint because there's no reason to put, you know, if you were going to like paracord is some resilient stuff. If you had a regular campsite, you could put, put something like this. And you could put three or four strands. You could put 50 feet in here and just weave a maze in. But I think this will do for today for what we're going to be talking about, how we're going to be using it. All right, because there's, there's three different ways of finishing off this table. One of the ways of finishing this table off is you could just go gather around. You don't even have to have green sticks. You could just go gather around the forest floor picking up all kinds of small sticks. Try to get them as, as straight as you possibly can. And then all you got to do is just weave some sticks through here like this at all different angles. All right. Now if you put enough sticks in there,
you'll eventually have a pretty pretty decent table but it takes a lot of sticks so you just put a pile of sticks in there like that <coughs> Just like that. You can do that. All right. Now the Pretty other thing that you can do, and you don't even have to have the sticks, but a few sticks do help, is if you're like me and you carry a ground cloth, you can just lay a heavy ground cloth over it. Just like that. And the combination between the paracord and the sticks will help hold everything in place. So then, you know, you got a, you got a nice table where you can place everything. All right. The old tree here. Now, in my case, with this Hidden Woodsman backpack, or uh, in your case, whatever pack has a place for a, a back pocket. Now this piece here has like a stiffener here in the back. Okay, so you can always, you see how this thing just fell forward? You can take this and use it. Okay. Let's look at this. You can have that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can see that. So you can have that as a really uh, good stiffener for a table. All right. So you got at least one place right here. Now, you might could put a stick up under it to kind of help support it because the, everything's sagging down because I've got so much weight on it. But if that tree was a little bit tighter too, I could have weaved it a little bit tighter, but that's a very, very small tree. Now something else I could do. See this tree? Let's see, I gotta move this thing. So I can see what I'm doing. See this little tree right here? Watch this. Look, it's giving a little. Now if I could tie a piece of paracord to it and tie it to this other tree, see, that's gonna tighten my table up a little bit. See, I get the sag out of it. That's, that's a huge difference right there. That's another thing. That's, I didn't choose real good trees for this one. Watch this. It's not an ideal table, but I mean, it's pretty good just to be made out of paracord and cloth. All right, right over there, we got a pack tied to the tree. Right there, we have our stool and our table. So what we're going to do now is we're going to weave a paracord bed. And what we're going to do is we're going to go between this maze of trees to this tree. If we have to, we're going to use that other tree. So basically what I'm going to do to start with is I'm just going to make runners from there to this other tree, all right? And I'm using 50 feet of cord. Now I have no idea if this is showing up on camera or not, but as you can see, there's paracord here. And as I have weaved the successive layers of paracord, I've gone down where I have like a nice scoop right in here. Now all I've got is runners going this way. Let's go up here and show you this. I hope you can see this. I probably should have done it with some bright paracord. But here's a runner right here. Let's see if I'm getting this on camera. Okay, here's a runner and the next one's lower, next one's lower, 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 and it goes back up. 
so it's like a cradle shape of paracord. Now, to keep these things from just spreading out, you're going to want to run a couple of lark's heads through here, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, if you'll look back here, you got a mess of paracord going everywhere at each end of the tree. This can be beneficial because, like, say, for example, see that mess of paracord run between them two trees? I've got, you can take, like, this is your food bag. If you want to, you can put it right there, and it'd be off the ground. Same thing with the other end. Let's go up here and take a look. See this maze of paracord going between the trees here? If you have to, you can put your food bag there. You could put multiple bags in here if you wanted to, just like that. Keep them off the ground. That's like my food bag, cell phone, wallet, first aid kit, stuff like that. So now I'm going to weave in between here with some lark's heads. Doesn't take a bunch, but just enough to keep from spreading out. Because the paracord going this way is what holds up your weight. You just don't want them spread out. So you're going to tie these together in two places with paracord and lark's heads. Now, I hope this is showing up, but what I've done is, see, these are all kind of weaving very loosely, but it doesn't matter because, you, you, as you can see, what it's going to do is it's going to keep all this stuff from spreading out. And they're lark's heads. They'll come undone fairly easy. So now I'm going to move them down here, and I'm going to put a couple more right here to kind of keep this stuff from spreading out. Let's watch this again, how I, I can do this. As long as I can uh, keep this loop, I'm going to show you how to do this here. So you want to go over... The main line and then over the line you're weaving you got a loop in your hand and then when you go put your cordage through there and pull it there's your lark's head over creating a loop and then you're going through the loop over creating a loop going through the loop. See, once you get the rhythm of it, over, creating a loop, and then curry. Now that's going to be kind of loose right there. Alright, stay skin. Over, create a loop, and then come through the loop. All right, so hopefully you can see this, because honestly, I can't see it. But what I've done is I've weaved, I've got all these loops weaved in here to keep this stuff from spreading out. All right, now let's go look at this. You could lay on that if you wanted to, but I find it's very uncomfortable. What I like to do is to lay a poncho line around it. <laughs> so let's lay that on it and see what it looks like. I'm going to set this camera up here to where you can see it. All right. Let's see if I can see myself. Yeah, I can. So what I like to do is take a poncho liner and I fold it in half and just lay it on it. It's going to sag pretty bad, so what you want to do is you want to get into, in it and set and see which end sags the most and have your head at the end that sags the least. Oh, no. So there is your paracord bed. Now, you can lay on it, like I say, without it, but I don't like to.
nothing to it. It may be easier, I think. It may be easier just to throw the thing over it completely. And you can tie one end off if you want to. Okay, this is the way all of my hanks of cord are, okay? I have it wrapped up to where you can just feed it out. Now all of my rope is done this way. All of my rope, my mule tape, my paracord, any kind of cordage I've got is like that. Then when you get done to it, you always wind up with a little knot at the end, but that ain't that big of a deal. So, this is my fixture here that I use at home. I brought it to show you because I figured this would be a good way of winding up this video. But it is two welding rods. Or you can use any kind of rod. And then I have this board and there's certain things marked on it. Okay, These two holes here for like 12 feet. Uh, this is mule tape 35 feet I think. This is 50 feet of paracord. This is 8 inch rope from here to here. This is my, yeah, there's the mule tape, 35 feet, 35 feet. Here's my quarter inch rope from here to here. All right, so what I do, let's see. Okay, let's go with, uh, I think that was a 12 foot. So what I do is I put these two in here just like this. And then I take a cordage. This is what I do every time I get back from a camping trip or a video or whatever. I'll set this like this, all right, and I've got, this is the tail end, and the way you do this is you wrap it around like a figure eight, and the figure eight, well, when I'm at home, it doesn't get tangled around tree limbs, so you just do it around figure eight, because if you just went, if you just went round and round, it wouldn't work. You could do this with dial pans. And once you got it at this point to where this is dangling off, you grab it with your hand. Okay, you got this end hanging off. This is the tail end that you feed out of. The part that's hanging off, what I do, is I'll grab it and I'll hold it with my thumb. And then I start wrapping it around tight, just like that. You want to kind of bunch them up like that right there. And then when you get towards the end... You just tuck it under. And see, that's how you've got that nice hank that feeds out from here. Isn't that cool? And that's my jig. It's just a piece of wood with a couple of stobs. And once you've gotten your, your dictated uh, distances, mark them with a magic marker. You can see here my little eighth inch rope. I do it the same way. And then my quarter inch rope. All of my quarter inch rope I do the same way. For my 3 8 rope, I had a much larger jig at home. And I think I showed that in a I think I showed that in a different video a long time ago. So anyway. Uh, I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, there's easier ways of doing things. <laughs> but the name of the channel is Fun in the Woods. And sometimes there's just something about paracord that it's limitless. And you can, the stools are great, uh, the table's great, uh, you can weave a table between four trees, between three trees, you can weave sticks through, you can lay cloth over it, you can put something solid over it, uh, it's limitless. The bed, you can pretty much weave a bed out of anything, so, anyway, hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed it, uh, questions or comments, I always try to answer the comments, it's a part of the fun of being on YouTube, because that's why I do this, it's for fun. <laughs> and if it ever becomes unfun, I'll quit doing it. So far, I've enjoyed every minute of it. So, enjoy life. Get off the couch. Get out from in front of the TV. Continue to watch YouTube. And we shall see you in the next one.
protection from bugs.